All right, welcome. Uh, that last room was all about automation. This room is all about uh, a conference room. This is a high impact space. A high impact space, as defined by our friends at Frost and Sullivan, is basically a conference room that has really high requirements for your audio and your video, right? Uh, this is a room that needs to be able to integrate a conference application to create a high quality performance uh, meeting both for the near-end participants and the far-end participants. This is not when you're calling home, uh, you're, you're working from home and you're calling in, you got your laptop and a camera, it's not that. We got high-end cameras in this room that can zoom in and focus on each of the participants here at the table. We got beam-forming microphones up in the sky. We got our own uh, network microphones here on the table. We got a lot of technology in the room and we got to be able to deliver the video and the audio of this room to the conferencing application of your choice. In here, we actually you have three different options. I know that's not terribly realistic. No one walks into a conference room and can choose between using uh, Google Meet or Microsoft Teams or Zoom. We just want to show that we can uh, we can deliver this to whichever application you might prefer. I'm going to do a call with Microsoft Teams just for argument's sake. Uh, first thing I actually want to point out uh, as we enter this call, it's going to be about a 30 second uh, call, uh, a call that could definitely be an email. We've all sat through some of those before, but I want you to pay attention uh, not necessarily to the content of the call, but to the audio of the call. I want you to listen to where the audio is being placed left to right as each of the participants in this call are speaking. If you're watching this uh, on a video, put on your headphones so you can really tell the difference between the left and right channels, all right? I'm going to step aside. Let's look up here in the screen so we can follow the call. Call started. Hey everyone. I know we have a lot to cover in this meeting, but I just wanted to introduce a new face on the call. Everyone, please welcome Megan. Hey, hey Megan. Hi, Megan. Hi. How's it going so far? It's good. It's great. I'm nervous. No need to be nervous. We're just people selling pet rocks. <laughs> Thank you. I... Did you just say pet rocks? All right. Down to business. So R&D, where are we at? The new tech looks promising. Should be ready by Q1. New tech for rocks? Great. Marketing, what's new? Us? We're trending through the roof. Really? How? Why? Excellent. Sales? Customers are dying to get their hands on these things. What? We've never seen anything like it. All right, then. Megan, any questions? All of them. That's great. Good meeting, everyone. All right. Thanks, all. Take care. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. Call ended. All right, so you, you heard that, right? It was easy to figure out who was talking. When the person on the left side of the video was talking, your head kind of intuitively looked over to them. It just makes the entire room a little bit more intuitive, a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more like a real life experience. That's something that Microsoft Teams is doing for their signature rooms. It's called spatial audio placement. And you know we have a partnership with them and it makes it really easy for us to deploy functionality like that as they're rolling it out. Now, when we are in a call, if you're going to be controlling that call here from the touchscreen controller, uh, typically you might go to the room controls. Uh, and when we're on this page, we actually are leaving the Microsoft Teams environment. Doesn't look like it. Here, let me throw it up on the screen so you can look at it up here. This is an example of what we're looking at. This is the same font, same colors that Microsoft Teams is using, but this is actually being fed up by the QSIS side of things. We threw these controls onto a UCI. We're able to deliver that to the Teams controller as a second page experience. So the user has no idea they're actually leaving the Teams environment and are now interacting directly with QSIS. That means that from the same pane of glass where they're controlling the conference call, they can actually control anything that QSIS can control in the room. Maybe that is making a change in the lighting. Maybe that is going to change uh, the content that we're throwing to the side displays. Whatever it is we want to control in the room, we can do it without them having to leave this piece of glass. I don't want them to walk over here to another controller that controls the lighting and uh, the, the displays in the room. I don't want them to run to the back of the room where there's an AC vent. I don't want any of that. They should be able to do it right here without getting up. It also corresponds to if we're going to mute the call. So if I go to my cameras and go to a video mute. Call muted. We all know what happens when you mute a conference call. You know, your video goes dark and your audio is muted. That's fine. But because our QSIS system is talking to that conferencing application, we can do lots of things on the QSIS side as well. So you heard we played an announcement saying the audio is muted, right? That isn't something that naturally happens when you're working in, in uh, Microsoft Teams. Also, take a look. These cameras are now facing the wall. They literally turned around and are facing the wall so that we know we're in a video mute. No one in the room has to worry about whether or not they are on camera. We're doing more than that. We're changing the graphic that's being sent to the far end. A lot of times the far end caller, if you go video mute, they might think to themselves, hey, did you mean to turn your video off? No. 
Of course they know we meant to do that because we're sending them an intentional graphic that says that. We are changing the LEDs of the microphones in the room. This is a Sennheiser microphone, so we're sending control to that. Same thing with our own microphones here on the table. We're changing the LEDs on that. Everything in the room has changed in the environment to make sure that everyone knows we're in a mute system. But they didn't have to worry about it. They, they just pressed a single button and the room reacts appropriately. Except for this guy. This microphone, something's wrong. I got no ring. That means that someone must have kicked the cable. It happens in the real world. Something goes wrong. When something goes wrong, what do we want to have happen? We want to get assistance, preferably from the IT department. What I don't want to do is I don't want to go across to the wall over there and pick up the phone and have to remember the extension of the IT department and talk to a human. I never want to talk to a human in the first place. So I would much rather that happened from the controller. So I can go back to that same room control uh, page I was at previously. I'll just tap this help desk option that we added on there and call for help. Help desk requested. Boom, I didn't even have to get up and leave my chair. Now, that information, along with the information probably gathered by the fact that we are missing the information from our microphone, is being bundled up and sent to our IT departments. And in fact, is being delivered to their Microsoft Teams channel via a webhook. So the IT department is just watching their normal Teams, gets the information that something is wrong, they know where it's wrong, they know when it went wrong, and they know what room it's in, and I didn't have to talk to anybody, which makes my life better. That's the kind of integrated, seamless experience we want for our end users, and it's what they deserve. Agreed? Awesome. All right, we're done in this room. We're going to go into the next room where we're going to talk about higher ed and lecture spaces.